So continuing along uh, part two, um, I'm Paul Beck with, um, with the Department of Geography, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology at the University of Ottawa. Um, so continuing on, the winter of 2015 was extremely warm, and this is data from November. Um, so basically, November was 1.05 degrees Celsius warmer than the average from 51, 1951 to 1980. And the distribution on the planet can be seen here. Um, this is a temperature uh, anomaly, so above normal. Um, and you can see areas of Siberia were, over, were between 4 and 10.2 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. The red areas are 2 to 4 degrees. Um, and if you look at the Antarctica, you can also see that the, uh, there's an anomalous warming here. Um, and uh, that's shown here, and the Arctic warming is shown here. This is a top view of the Arctic Ocean, and you can see this vast area of, of, of the Arctic was much, much warmer than normal. So this, of course, uh, reduces the strength of the sea ice uh, formation in the winter. Okay, um, so this shows, um, this is now a yearly view from December um, of 2014 through to November of 2015. Um, and you can see the temperature anomaly over this time period uh, relative to, to 50, 1951 to 80, 0.83 degrees Celsius. Uh, relative to 1900 to 1930 time frame, 1.15 degrees Celsius. Um, and you can see, you know, where the extra heat is. Um, also notice the cold pool south of Greenland, um, which is occurring because there's an excessive melt from Greenland and there's a lot of export of uh, ice from the Arctic and the fresh water is coming and it's cooling that region. Also the Gulf Stream doesn't come up as high, it's deflected southward. So there's more heat here and there's more there, there's less heat here, so it's colder, and the Gulf Stream gets kind of blocked, so this area is anomalously warm. Um, and uh, so, so you can see um, that we've had, you know, extremely strong warming, um, you know, this, this century. Um, so the, you know, if you're basing it on, so getting back to this, okay, you're the 1.15 degrees warmer than this time period. Um, and you can see the distribution here. Um, and one of the things is, th this is showing the permafrost. The continuous permafrost is the darker region. Um, and the lighter purple is the discontinuous permafrost. And when you're warming this whole Arctic region, you're, you're causing a, a lot of problems. You're melting the permafrost, you're getting emissions of methane and CO2, which is then feeding back causing more and more warming. So we argue, um, we argue here that uh, this is an immediate emergency intervention is, is essential. Otherwise, we're going to have near future multiple, multiple amplifying feedback climate, you know, sort of runaways. I mean, it's gonna, it's just gonna take off. It's, you know, that's how we're using the term sort of loosely. Um, we're not saying the earth is gonna turn into Venus, but the earth is gonna, the temperature is gonna skyrocket up. Um, note the only cooler region is the North Atlantic, um, and this is slowing the deep ocean, this is indicating a slowing of the deep ocean conveyor current. So it's, it's expected to increase storms and climate chaos in Western Europe, Eastern North America, and be very damaging to the North Atlantic marine environment. So we've been arguing at the Arctic Methane Emergency Group that we have a certain planetary climate emergency. We've been saying this uh, without, flat, without, without any change um, in view for at least the last four or five years. And, uh, you know, it's, it's happening. I mean, it's becoming more and more obvious to more and more people. Um, only immediate emergency intervention can prevent going over 1.5, which would be, you know, and, and two, two degrees, which is, you know, we've had um, we're, we're below there now and uh, we're getting extreme weather events around the planet that are extremely concerning. Okay, so getting back more to some of the greenhouse gases and what's going on. Um, 
This is a location off BC, for example, and you can see the CO2 rise to 401, the methane rise to 1900, and the N2O to almost 330. The equivalent CO2 equivalent um, is 485 parts per million. Um, so when you account for all these other greenhouse gases and bring them the radiative forcing and put them on par with CO2, it's 485 ppm CO2 equivalent. Um, now this is data from the Japan Meteorological Agency, so we hit that plus 1.4 degrees Celsius, we're in a strong El Nino year, so that's brought the temperature up. When the, you know, hopefully the El Nino strength will dissipate uh, as, as, as it always does, um, and then we'll be back down to the 1.1 above normal or something, and that gives us time until the next strong El Nino. Um, we don't have time, it gives us time. Um, it means that we're not, at, we're not almost at the 1.5 yet, um, you know, on average, you know, we are in an, in an El Nino year. Uh, but this, you know, the 1.5 degrees of Paris, I mean, the policymakers are, you know, they're, they're really behind the eight ball on this. Um, they, they need to, this is an emergency situation, a global emergency situation. The sooner people recognize this, the, the more chance we have to uh, do something about, and I've talked about that, three-legged stool. Zeroing in fossil fuel emissions, we have to remove CO2 from the atmosphere, um, figure out ways to lower methane even, as part of lowering CO2, lowering methane. And we have to cool the Arctic, otherwise, you know, we, let, we lose the sea ice and snow cover, um, the methane's gonna come skyrocketing up. We're gonna get um, exponential increase in uh, melt rates from Greenland. And uh, that's going to wreak uh, climate, may climate mayhem around, around the planet. Um, so this is where we are. Um, this, is, uh, this shows you the Arctic. Um, so uh, this is the Arctic in um, about 2000. Um, this is the Arctic, the, this is the, the absorbed solar radiation change, um, sorry, this is the sea ice fraction change um, from reduction between 2000 and 2014, and this is the solar radiation change. So the dark areas here, these areas are open water for much longer times of the year around the edges, um, so there's more absorption. So the albedo has uh, decreased, the reflectivity has decreased, the dark ocean is there instead of the light uh, uh, sea ice. So what we're seeing is the Arctic region is darkening quickly. Um, and in fact, the increased darker surface area during the Arctic summer is responsible for a 5% increase in absorbed solar radiation since 2000. So since 2000, we've had 5% more solar radiation absorbed in the Arctic, which is heating it. Uh, and most of the, some of the most pronounced decreases are in the Beaufort Sea um, area, up in this area here. Um, now the problem is, is this is where the, uh, the Beaufort Continental Shelf Methane Hydrate is. Okay, these areas are where the hydrates are. They're in the shallow, on the shallow continental shelf. There are areas, look at this area here, where the, where the maximum heating is. Okay, so what this is risking and this is another view of the different types of hydrates. Um, and uh, what we're risking is when the seawater temperature goes up a lot and it thaws the seafloor, then the methane comes up and it goes into the atmosphere and it causes tremendous warming. And I think we're already seeing some of that. And those 20 degrees Celsius temperature anomalies up in the Arctic, I think part of, part of those, the reasons they stick around is because there's a source of methane um, so it's not just the fractured jet streams, but that needs to be confirmed. Um, so this is showing, um, this is just showing some stuff from, um, from Hansen. Um, it's showing, so it shows the, the Arctic, uh, northern mid-latitudes, southern mid-latitudes, and Antarctica. Temperature changes from 1880 to the present. You know, this compares the Arctic. To the Antarctic. So the Arctic is warming much faster, Antarctic still warming, uh, but not at the same rate. The Arctic is warming much faster. Um, this is a glow up of just the northern mid latitudes versus southern mid latitudes. The north, north. In the south, uh, there's a lot more ocean 
keeps the temperature more stable in the north a lot more land masses so we're warming much faster and we are definitely warming in the tropics but generally a lot of the warming in the tropics goes into creating more water vapor um, which keeps the temperature rise um, a bit lower than it would be otherwise um, 2015 record arctic temperatures um, the increase is about three and a half times the global average okay um, you can see, you know, the number you hear is the Arctic's warming at twice as fast as the global average. Well, that number's, I don't know where that number comes from because this is showing 3.5 times uh, increase. And, you know, if you look at the, just the high Arctic is warming five to eight times faster. Um, when you get these huge 20 degree temperature anomalies coming through, you know, for a given month here, a given month there, mostly the winter months, the warming is much faster. You know, it's closer to that eight times the global average. So, you know, what's important for melting snow and ice is the temperatures that are occurring or, or, or preventing, you know, really high temperature or preventing the formation of, of for example, the sea ice. Um, so this is a big problem. Um, this is, uh, now this is some atmospheric methane um, at, at um, Mauna Loa in the middle of the Pacific, and then off BC, uh, 1900. So there are regions, you know, there is a variation. Um, this shows uh, the Arctic methane um, on a different day. So in the Arctic, so in the Arctic, uh, in 1986, Barrow, Alaska was 1750. You know, now in 2015, it's 1930, and there's spikes that are much higher over 2000. Um, alert is the highest in the Arctic, um, and, uh, the highest Arctic, uh, the highest in the Arctic, 1920, but there are some regions where there's even higher. So in Finland, uh, 1940, um, coastal Siberia, the highest global methane um, in coastal Siberia, 1953 um, that's the highest part in on, on the in the planet on the planet um, so this just shows uh, at Mauna Loa so the co2 the methane and the nitrous oxide um, this is a phenomenal rate of increase in just 10 years these curves are over 10 years it's a phenomenal rate of rate of increase. It's, it's probably at least 10 times faster than anything that we've seen before um, on this planet um, even through all those massive uh, changes, um, ice ages to non-ice ages and so on. Um, you know, if you look at the paleo record going back, um, you know, you have a resolution issue, but this is, this is unprecedented. We, we've we've uh, completely uh, thrown a hammer in the fine gears of the climate system, uh, a sledgehammer. Okay. Um, this is showing some data on a different day, the December 29th. Um, so CO2, methane, nitrous oxide at Mauna Loa. Um, and this is from 85 to present day. Um, so there's no sign of, of slowing for these greenhouse gases. Um, and the, uh, of course, the ocean acidification is caused by CO2. It's the highest in 15 to 20 million years and it's the acidification's increasing at a phenomenal rate. So like we're in, we're clearly in a, in a global state of emergency. Uh, the, the, the climate system is screaming at, at humans saying, you know, you guys are, you, you guys better wake up because, uh, you know, I'm not very happy with what you've done to uh, my atmosphere and oceans. Um, more, some more data off uh, BC. This is where Estevan Point is, um, and you can see the rises. I mean, there's lots of data. You can go on, online and find any of this data. Um, what this is, is this is showing the CO2 equivalent. Um, and right now, I said that we were at 485 ppm CO2 equivalent. So if you just consider CO2 alone, you get this. If you consider all the anthropogenic greenhouse gases, you get the red line. And then if you get non-CO2 greenhouse gases, gases as well, um, CO2 equivalent, that's the equivalent of, of everything. Um, and it's just uh, continuing to skyrocket. Um, I think that's the last slide that I want to talk about. Um, this just shows some of the IPCC numbers, but we're, we're much higher than those numbers.
So thanks.